Well, this Tuesday, Patty Wetterling's new book, Dear Jacob, A Mother's Journey of Hope, will be released. The book details her 27-year search for her kidnapped son, Jacob. The book, written with blogger Joy Baker, gives a dramatic account of the real-life events that the Wetterling family went through. It also details how, in the end, it was the persistence of Patty, blogger Joy Baker, and survivor Jared Shiro that led the case to finally being solved. The book provides the reader a seat next to Patty as she and her family never give up hope of finding Jacob and how along the way she became one of the nation's foremost experts on missing and exploited children. And Patty Wetterling and Joy Baker are here live now. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, in. Says me, you've been with us. Well, oh. You've been with us a long time. Well, I know, and I just, uh, I just can't say enough about the book, which really talks about the heroic efforts that, that you have maintained for the past 27 years and also the incredible efforts by Joy and Jared. We'll get to that in just a second. But why did you write this? A lot of people asked me to write the book and basically my daughter said, you wrote it for Jacob. Um, he wasn't done yet, you know, and I think there are lessons to be learned. Um, I learned a lot, certainly, and other people are going through all kinds of stress in their lives. So if it can help them get through whatever the challenges are in their life. I, I'd hoped it to be a useful. Okay. Useful because the, the one thing, and it really, it was Patty and Joy and Jared Shirel who really put some of the, the pieces together here with some unsolved cases in Painesville. Joy, how, and just with all due respect, it, this was, it reads like a movie or a thriller, which is what your poor life has been, Patty Wetterling. How did you put that together, and how are you inside all of these events that occurred over so long? Well, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a, a challenge. And, you know, just trying to introduce Patty's growing up years and her, you know, I where love did that this part of the book. come from? I love right? that. And that's what we imagined this to be when we started. It was going to be more of a legacy piece for, for Jacob and for Patty and all the work that she's done. But then when Jacob was found and that was, you know, such a shock to the system that we had to stop writing for a few years and kind of rethink and restart and we had to start over. Right. Well, we're coming up to the 34th anniversary just a week from today. Um, and I know that I've talked to you before how there are people, I, wonderful people I work with here and people all around who are probably watching who don't know Jacob's name. Maybe they've just moved here. Can you just explain the, the very shell of, of what happened that, all, that night? Sure. Um, at the time, I was a stay-at-home mom with four busy children, and uh, we were invited to a dinner party. And um, when we got there, our neighbor called and told us to come home. And uh, he told us that Jacob had been kidnapped by a masked, masked gunman one half mile from our house. And... We had about a 20-minute drive on the way home, and you know, Jerry and I are just like, "What?" I, I mean, this was unconscionable. And this is in, in lovely St. Joseph, Central Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, we at the time it was about 3,000 people. A mile had, from your house. Half, Less, a half a mile from your house. We yeah. had two and a half police officers in St. Joe. Um, after 4:30, it rolls over to the sheriff's department. But it was such small town feel, and uh, the kids were just going to bike down and rent a video. This is pre. Uh, Elect, you know, yes. get everything on your phone. Um, they were confronted by a masked man who uh, let two of them go and kept with Jacob. a gun. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things is for two decades, two decades, this case really went through all kinds of twists and turns. A lot of people were even one person was actually publicly named as a suspect, a neighbor, totally innocent. But you decide in 2010, you're a hospital administrator, hospital marketing person in New London, <laughs> Minnesota, and you decide to start blogging out of the case, blogging about the case. And, and this is the genesis. I mean, it's, it's remarkable what, what you ended up doing. So tell us a little bit about your story and how you eventually got to the Painesville cases. Well, okay, so in 2010, I, I had been at that time uh, a co-owner in a central Minnesota advertising agency in Wilmer, and I just couldn't, I couldn't see myself doing that for another 20 years. We were coming up on our 20-year anniversary. So I did want to figure out how to start my act two. I wanted to yeah. be a writer. So that's all I was trying to do, and I had written about another story first um, that was very captivating, and it gained a lot of readership. And 
So when that story started to wind down, I really wanted to write about something else that might have a, you know, the possibility of a happy ending. And so I happened upon uh, Jacob's case. Not that I didn't know about it, of course. I grew up here. But I hadn't, um, really hadn't heard anything new for a while. And then when, when yes, the person of interest yeah. kind of took center stage, that right. changed everything. And I know one of the things, Patty, that, that is... Um, so poignant here is that I know you and your family considered Jacob to be alive this whole time and we're hoping that he would walk in that door. You, you've, you're in the same house, you never changed your phone number because of that. Certainly I, I got very active with the, became very active with the National Center for Missing Well you were original Exchange. board member. Yeah, well, yes. I was, well I came in a little bit later but I, I stayed board, on the board for over 20, 22 years or something. Right. Along the way, I met kids who were abducted and came home after six months. Not Elizabeth Smart was nine months. And you worked years. with these families. You yes. worked with Elizabeth Smart's family yes, together. Yes, I know back. his parents. And, and five years later, and I met two of the women from Cleveland, 10 years. Okay. Um, JC, 20, 17 and a half years. So I knew that there's missing JC kids Duvard. out there. You can't give up on them. And so my hope was very real. Right. It's improbable. Okay. I knew that. But... There's kids out there, and I wanted so badly okay. for Jacob to be one. Well, in about 2013 or so, Joy uncovers somehow Painesville, Minnesota's newspaper is online, and, yeah. and which is a miracle in and of itself. But you find this article about unsolved cases of abductions of boys, stranger or attempted abductions where boys are knocked off bicycles, they're groped. And nothing ever came of this investigation. It was never looked into, and it, it, it that became the, the missing piece here. What was that like to hear about those cases and, and to realize this woman had, had, had uncovered them? Well, I knew with my work um, that there's huge relevance. You've got a pocket of victimizations. There's a very high probability that they're connected. And, um, but the time frame was, working against us because with, like with Jared the statute of limitations had run out so that's one of the reasons why law enforcement wasn't doing anything now I don't know why they didn't do more yeah. in the beginning right um, in terms of uh, one of the things after pa uh, Joy starts writing in her blog about these unsolved pa uh, Painesville cases linking them to Jared's case and then linking them to Jacob's case you start uncovering all of this evidence as does Jared Shirell and you, Patty, who were all, was always so gracious about all the efforts law enforcement went into, you actually confronted law enforcement and said, what is going on here? And, and that's something that you never did. You were asked many times by reporters, including myself, are you upset with law enforcement about this? Because it was obvious something was happening here. Right. I, we needed law enforcement, and I didn't ever want to, to beat them up. But suddenly, Joy comes along and starts asking questions that weren't being asked anymore. So I also knew about the FBI team that comes and revisits cases. So Jerry and I called a meeting and said, we want, it was all approaching 25 years. It was the 25 year anniversary. Yes. And, and all of this was coming on. And judging by, by the, uh, some of the documents I've gotten, the FBI and law enforcement were very aware of what you were doing <laughs> and saying, maybe we better take a look at this um, again. And I told you, I think one of the amazing things about this book is it really shows how anybody can do anything, that anything is possible, that a blogger sitting there doing research, a mom, you know, pushing and persevering, uh, it, it's really heroic. Thank you, but we, we have to also salute those victims who were willing to talk to Jared yes. and Joy. They These are the Painesville cases, and they were never looked at, and they, they, these poor boys who are now middle-aged men. Right. There might have been a look, a look way yeah. back in 87, but the, we didn't have the coordination of law enforcement. There was no training okay. on missing children. And, and so, yeah, they felt rather abandoned. And it's brave okay. to come forward and share your story. And it was pivotal right. that they were able to. Well, I, I just can't say enough good things about the book. Um, I will be having a longer uh, show on my Talking Point show on CBS News Minnesota on Wednesday and Thursday night at 6.30 and 9.30 p.m half hour with these two right here, which we're gonna tape in just a bit. So thank you so much for coming in, and, and really just, uh, what, what you did was just remarkable. Well, thank you for your heartfelt coverage. You guys never gave up either. Yeah. Thank you. Well, 
because they were right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just was so obvious that, that you had, that Jared and Joy had something, and you right. recognized that as yeah. well.